Waste management has been generating a lot of controversy in Lagos State in recent weeks as streets have been littered with waste all over Lagos. The state government has been reacting to this development with a prompt reaction by waste managers calling for residents to be patient. But this patience is wearing thin as residents are beginning to call the state government out not just for the waste but an increase in the levies paid by residents monthly. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of This is Lagos. Heaps of waste of littered streets across Lagos in recent weeks as residents decried the neglect of the state's waste management authority to its duties. The waste management team is meeting with journalists to give account for its activities recently, explaining that the effects on the cost of doing business for contractors and a backlog at the dumping site was the cause for the litters across Lagos. It's got to do with the rising cost of doing the business vis-a-vis -vis the rising costs in the diesel. Now we are finding it very, very difficult to run the business profitably. Each and every one as a bare minimum generates about 0.65 kg of waste on a daily basis, which amounts to 13,000 metric tons. The surge of waste or backlog that you saw out there but as a result of when people choose to give their waste to cat pushers and we continue to push through our enforcement team to ensure that that is not tolerated in Lagos because our cat pushers don't have the ability to get to the dump site. The state officials are however concerned about the attitude of some residents who have taken to dumping their refuse along the road. They warn this will become an offence in the coming months for those caught in the act. The most of the critical issue that we have with indiscriminate dumping of waste in our society. People were jailed last year for waste-related offenses. Over 1,200 did community service in joining our sweepers to, to sweep and do this job that we do very well. And I know that over 3,000 were fined, but the most important thing for us all is why don't we ensure we do the right thing the first time. Both the waste contractors and authorities present are appealing to residents to bear with the increase in fees as this is the only way to effectively keep the business of private investors involved afloat. We also challenge them to ensure that each of our PSP are completing a minimum of 16 trips on a monthly basis and we are monitoring their performance on a daily basis. We don't wait till the end of the month to know what the PSP has done. It's a matter of how many have you done today. The Waste Management Authority is urging residents to be patient as efforts from the governor's office and other concerned bodies will focus on alleviating the backlog of waste in the coming weeks. Reduce, reuse and recycle is a new phrase around the world as residents look to end single use of products with the hope of cutting waste and ultimately saving the planet from spilling over with toxins. The Lagos State Government has taken the time to spread the message, especially with the younger generation, in commemoration of its recycling initiative. Fifteen years ago, there was nothing called plastic, but then came what? Bottles. And then what happened? Problem. And then what? Pollution. But now, we are now trying to treat the pollution. The recycling industry has attracted more investment both locally and internationally to the credit of the state and its led waste management agencies such as the Ministry of Environment and Water Resources and the Lagos Waste Management Authority. Before institutionalizing recycling activity in the state, informal recovery of waste was prominent in the PS crews and other individual waste collectors. Recovery recyclables all around the collection and confusion process. All these activities are now being regulated with proper engagement of all stakeholders. Each stakeholder is very important. So if we all work together, we can ensure that we have a cleaner Lagos, a cleaner environment, and the future of our children get represented. The state government says beyond saving the planet, the economic implications of recycling is creating jobs for thousands of residents. We've also created job opportunity for over 12,500 people in the last three years. The value of recyclables have gone up from 15 naira on that day 
to now that same product is 150, 170 now. Not because of inflation. It's because of understanding the value chain and understanding the need for us to grow it. For some of the recyclers present, they say it has become imperative to include the citizens in the process in order to reduce the decay in recyclable waste before it reaches the treatment plant. For example, we are setting up aggregation center in all local governments in Nigeria, starting from Lagos State. So each local government will have one aggregation center, five collection centers. So if you look at it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of job that will be created. We're not also saying, oh, government should bring money into that sector. No, the government should make an enabling environment for investment to strive in that sector. The state government is urging residents to comply with the law for all residents to have waste bins to help in the sorting process before waste managers hit their waste. Public hospitals, the more affordable option for the average resident, sees huge crowds with patients waiting several hours and doctors and medical staff stretched to their limit. The Lagos State Government is looking to bridge this gap with the launch of mobile apps and unique call codes that will allow doctors attend to patients remotely and improve the collection of insurance to effectively maintain the sector. The technology platform will provide Lagos residents the ease of uptake of health insurance, which will provide seamless access and provides a gateway for residents to meet with the mandatory enrollment demands of the new health, National Health Insurance Authority Act. To download the, and use the customer app and USSD channel, but also spread the word amongst their friends, family, colleagues, and Acquaintances. For the Commissioner of Health in Lagos, Professor Akinya Bayomi, the brain drain in the health sector is leaving a huge gap that must be addressed. They're doing that because the workspace, the work environment is not conducive for them to carry out their function. So one of the major things we're doing as government is to provide an environment that is conducive for our health professionals to practice. Professionals present remain convinced health insurance is the only way to improve and expand the capacity of public health facilities as they hope the new digital innovations can help address. It reduces the number of people, actually, in terms of HR that will be providing this service and is a way to help defray um, those challenges that we have now while government works on you know, looking for more lasting solutions. Now they can interface with their clients directly and not all the clients need to come to hospital. Some of them may be given advice over the phone about what to do and so on and so forth. So it reduces traffic in the hospital as well as making sure that the citizens still get the health care they need. President Momodo Buari had recently signed the National Health Insurance Authority bill into law. Implementing this bill will help state government improve access of residents to Medicare. While Lagos has seen an increase in health insurance subscriptions, several residents still opt to pay over the counter for medical services. Even worse is the refusal of residents to re-opt into the coverage when the package expires, many claiming they have little cause to visit the hospital. <laughs> the Lagos State Government is looking to change the mindset by making the insurance plans attractive to residents, especially those living on low incomes with promotional offers and gift prizes. And I would like all of us here that are present here once we get home to tell our neighbors about this program. It's, uh, it's not expensive and we all need to, you know, key into it. The state's health management agency is convinced the new domestication of health insurance in the Nigerian constitution and with collaboration with local and community leaders, the world will reach take. The word will reach all residents. At federal level now, they have enacted a law that says that everybody must buy a social health insurance plan of the state that they reside in. People should not, it shouldn't even get to the point where they are being forced because it is something that is of benefit to your family. And as I advise my constituents, they should please buy into it. And I also have a private meeting with them, a constituency meeting, to enlighten them on the need to have um, one or two insurance schemes. 
introduced by the Lagos State government because this is a, the, the, I would say the only way to get good medical service because medical service anywhere in the world doesn't come cheap. Some senior citizens who have received honorary insurance plans underscore the importance of such schemes on the elderly who are no longer able to fetch a living for themselves. It's a good event if our people can get into it so that they don't have to pay anything. It's just a little uh, money they will pay. To be good there and shake my, check my body, treatment with my family, children, wife, everybody. Lagos says more participation in health insurance will only help drive down the price of packages and cost of services to the benefits of the general public. The latest United Nations report indicates that 30% of the global mortality is caused by non-communicable diseases. Cancer, leading in the cause of death in many of these instances, is the purpose of this training organized by the Lagos State Government and funded by the United Nations. Not with assumption. You don't want to assume it was 4 cm, now it's 3 cm. 200 doctors and other practitioners have been gathered to train them to provide free breast and cervical cancer examination across the state's tertiary health care facilities. And this particular training is linked to SDG 3, um, the target of 3.7, ensuring universal access to sexual and reproductive health. And again, it's contributing to the target 3.4, which is um, preventing and um, ending all forms of um, mortality from non-communicable diseases. For the state government, this training is key, especially due to the massive brain drain in the health sector across the country. Now, we've had the previous training about two years ago, but you know that um, the reality of what is happening all over the world, not just in Lagos State, but all over the world, there's a lot of migration of people in and out of the states. As people are coming in, people are leaving. So, meaning that even our air care workers, the ones that we trained two years ago, are still not necessarily the ones that are in our facilities now. So we need to improve the skills of those that are presently working at so that they can provide the services. We have about 60 health facilities owned by the state that is being uh, used to run this uh, screen and treat program for both breast and um, cervical cancer uh, program. For some of the beneficiaries, the training should come with more advocacy to enlighten the people on the benefits of early detection through the free examination. For that, as I said, screening, breast screening, for example, which has to do with self, uh, telling our clients um, to do self breast examination. And um, in case they come to the clinic, we also offer the clinical br um, breast examination where they, like, they are screened regardless of whether they come with any symptoms or not. The state and the United Nations hopes this training will help save more lives amongst women. Weeks since the Lagos State Government suspended its own safety guidelines on medically induced abortions, some women in Lagos are challenging Governor Abajide Sanolu to lift the suspension to prevent women from fatality during childbirth. The gender advocates who stage a rally from the city centre, Ikeja, to the governor's office are asking the state government not to prioritise politics against the lives of women at risk of childbirth mortality. If you look at the population of Lagos, if the same 10 percent of the total maternal deaths in Nigeria, uh, in, in the world, is from Nigeria, then Lagos obviously carry the biggest of it. We have had cases in that regard. We have had reports. Women here who are seated here in large groups, they have different experiences. That's why we're saying that we cannot politicize the lives of women. Absolutely. You know, this is August. The election is coming up in February next year. So you can imagine how many women will die for February. The, 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 the law in Nigeria does not say that there should no, not be um, termination of pregnancy. It allows for safe abortion. It must be under the condition that the life of the woman is threatened. And Lagos has just added one more condition, which is the physical health of the women. And that is the standard operating procedure that the medical practitioner in Lagos had come up with. The state officials who received the letter on behalf of the governor say a policy document will be prepared for consideration and subsequent assent.
And I want to say that Mr. Governor will be informed of the majority you demonstrated in making your request unto him. Likewise, as we have collected an extract of your request, it behoves the Office of Civic Engagement to go through it, make it, like she said, a policy paper, and make a presentation to Mr. Governor on your request. Students from the Lagos State University campuses are gathered in Ojo for this workshop focused on harnessing skills for their self-development and to calibrate them for the labor market. The students and professionals are given the freedom to speak at a roundtable session to identify what the current world demands and how these final year students can equip themselves with the required know-how. It's quite difficult to distinguish between skill acquisition and entrepreneurship. I So in that tailoring, or fashion design or, or even the cooking. It is an identification of the opportunity within the locality or community that makes an enterprise. For the state government, professional recruiters have been invited to the conference in order to identify and address the major flaws that distinguish suitable candidates during job interviews. You have about 12 mentors on ground to mentor the students on career choices and the rest of it. And then, like you can see behind me, you have the CV clinic where students get to either revamp their CVs or build professional CVs. So the main brain behind it is to create jobs. So whatever we are doing, we always have that at the back of our mind. You can see my colleague, this is the Dean of Students Affairs. You can see my colleague too, Dr. Mrs. Shobo Ali. All of us, and some of that, some others are in the hall there, trying to you know, make sure that we give maximum support to Lagos State government in the realization of this laudable objective. Students gathered say, there is a lot that needs to be learned outside of the four walls of a university which will put them in good stead after graduation. Not having a skill, you know, will not make it relevant to the society out there. You know, somebody in there said money chases value. So one of the things um, a skill will do for you is to add value. The major skills that actually are you know, making the rave now are the analytical skills, the networking skills, your communication skills and also the way you relate with people. With conversations and school curriculums and course modules dominating the education sector, the state government says it will explore ways of making such conversations a part of every course calendar to make transition from school into the labor market seamless. Transportation is one of the major issues that was raised by the Babaji de Olushala Saolo administration coming into office. The state government is looking to explore the rail transport network with the launch of a new transport system before the end of 2022. The state governor was present as the final beam was being laid to see the new train tracks across Lagos set up across the state. The Lagos State Governor Abajide Saulu is present to witness the historic moment and personally flag off the engineering procedure held at the site of the iconic marina station of the rail project. With the laying of the final T-beam, all difficult civil works standing in the way of the Lagos Blue Rail Line, which started in 2012, have been overcome. The contractor will now go ahead to set the rail tracks along the alignment and move the project to completion. The bridge from Tejun Sho that now exits into Muritala Mohammed is also a tea bridge like you have in, um, in Ikeja. It's also a tea bridge and the contractor was on site and the contractor also had indicated by November before the end of this year that whole bridge also will be open. From there, we are now here at Ebutemeta and we are at the junction, like I said, of Ebutemeta, which is Apapa Road and Maritala Mohamed. Similarly as well here, we have a bridge overpass and we have a train station. The red line is a project that was conceived by this government 
is a project that was started by this government and you can see that we have given commitment but by the end of this year we should be rounding up on the red line. Governor Saolu again committed the Lagos State Metropolitan Area Transport Authority and the contractor to the December deadline for the Blue Line project's completion. Similarly, also at the Mushi station, you have a bridge, a bridge that crosses from Kayode Yonipan site, the Ikorodu Road site of, um, of, um, of, of the bridge, onto the Ogumoku site, you know, in, um, in Mushi going towards Agege Motor Road. You could see that the bridge are out and it's on, it's on schedule. There were a few challenges in that area. There are one or two schools that we need to re re relocate and there's a massive, massive, you know, um, regeneration that we plan for that whole place. You could see that on the rail track, there are several demolition that has taken place. Government has paid extensive amount, far and over beyond what anybody could have expected on that entire, that's why we don't have any problem at all. Once again, the state government, in addition to the existing ban, is now set to effect a total ban on Okada activities in four new local governments and their respective LCDs from the 1st of September 2022. One week after the ban was extended to Koshafe, Oshodi, Solo, Shomolu and Moshi and affected local community development areas, residents appear to be adjusting to the new way of life. Some are seen waiting for minibuses as others appear to have taken to walk in to their respective destinations. The reactions are mixed as some agree that a change was needed while others point at the lack of penetration to underdeveloped streets where Okada riders can maneuver. And obviously it has affected movement somehow but there is a good side of it in the sense that a little bit sanity is on the road now, even within Lagos environment. I have a bike when I used to carry my children and go to school. But now, to go to school is not a problem. Even if both Okada and those keke, even the, the, those keke, they are, they are all the most worse now. There are, however, broader concerns to the economic implications to such a ban. Like me now, I'm a dispatch rider. Bike, bandit of this Okada now is affecting us. This dispatch bike now was three something before. But now we are buying this bike, 600,000. Before you buy the box, Register with uh, uh, Lagos State, everything close to 800 and something thousand. It's, people have been breaking shop, shop have been breaking, stealing everywhere, they are collecting back from people. Others say the security implications of rendering riders jobless are far reaching. I have like four, four friends, what, that they take down, kind of send their children to go to school. Their children there, they cannot go to school again. Now one of them, I said, maybe just go join a do labor. How much they want to give in there to come to go and feed the children? We wrote to um, the Navy, the Army, etc., um, uh, so that we can actually dialogue with their members. And we made it clear that uh, any military uh, carrying passenger is also, I mean, guilty and liable and uh, will be prosecuted also. And I think that has been cascaded. Um, I, I recollect that uh, a few officers um, I mean, fell foul of the law and uh, their respective uh, commanders dealt with them. And we will continue to dialogue with these people uh, just to make sure that um, they uh, comply with the law. As for the riders, we have also made available existing interventions aimed at empowering citizens as an alternative means of livelihood. When people get to about 40, 45, you know, Okada no longer becomes a sustainable means. And because they pass the age where they can develop credible skills, um, it becomes a liability on the state. And we, begin, um, we need to begin to look at uh, these people and then to ensure that people pick up the right skills and uh, so that we can guide them to uh, what is actually sustainable. With over 7,000 motorcycles crushed in Lagos since the ban on commercial motorcycles were put in place, residents appeal to the state government to attend to the ripple effects of such a ban before any further extension. When the rail network becomes fully operational, residents will be hoping this reduced travel time across the state as major travelers tend to move from the mainland to the island daily in search of business activities. That completes our episode for this week. Until next time, I am Will Sinomoni and this is Lagos. <music>